Hi folks, we were spending too much time hosing out our Haas machines at the end of the day. We found that the chips would build up in the corners and around the base of the augers, and we figured out the solution. They're these 3D printed inserts. We'll have a link in the description where you can download those and print them yourself. And I'm gonna spend some time showing how we kind of measured this up and modeled them in Fusion 360. Uh, we're using the loft command. It's not complicated, but it's kind of that next level from up from the basic extrude and making your basic shapes. Uh, but I gotta say, uh, this was a project that we failed at for quite a while. We started this probably a year ago and we tried adding, literally adding a pump to our VF6 here. That guy right there in the middle, along with PEX washdown bars and lock line washers with ball valves to balance the flow. Not only did it not work, but to do this at scale with the cost of the pump and the PEX and the hassle and the insulation, just wasn't the right fit. We also tried an auger extension design, and it's actually held up okay in this machine, uh, but they failed in many of the other machines, and it just didn't withstand the test of time. It also was a good example of trying to be a little bit too cute, because ultimately what we realized is the simplistic thing is using the only kind of free force that we all have access to, which is gravity. So we 3D printed these. If you are a sheet metal shopper, you've got access to one, my gosh, I, I don't, wouldn't knock that for a second. But for me, and I think for a lot of folks, 3D printing is just so cheap. And if you haven't seen our other videos for 3D printed uses in a machine shop, definitely check that out because this is such a great example. Uh, and what I think is really cool is the auger bridge inserts here. We've got them so that you can print four of them at a time on a pretty standard printer size like the Prusa that we have. We've had them in this VF6 machine for over six months and they work absolutely great. We're using magnets on the base and on the back wall to attach them in, but I kind of have this love-hate relationships with magnets too. Uh, they're cheap, they're easy, but they tend to attract and keep chips attached to them both in the machine and it makes it really hard to clean them. We've been using these long enough to say, the auger bridges work great, and probably even more important is this angled piece that goes right up against where the y-axis meets the column, because that area tended to accumulate a lot of chips, and if you don't keep that clean, you can end up wedging chips up in between your gasket or seals, uh, or even uh, alarm out the machine because it doesn't have enough y-axis motion. The other thing we learned in all this different experimenting with pumps and washdowns and brackets and 3D printed parts is that the best thing that you can do is avoid the chips building up in the first place. Because once they do, it takes a surprising amount of force or fluid to dislodge them and get them moving. So having these 3D printed inserts with the steeper angled walls to help the chips wash down throughout the process is key to avoiding them ever building up. Let's take a look though at how we modeled up both of these in Fusion. I'm a visual person. So the first thing I did to model the auger bridge was created a sketch of the Haas trough base. I got the 15 degree angle using my grandfather's old angle finder, and then just took some rough dimensions with tape measure and micrometers. That helped me visualize what I wanted the bridge to look like. But the first time I did this, really went about it all the wrong way. I extruded it straight back, mirrored it, and then tried to add a loft, but it just wasn't working the way I wanted. We actually needed more clearance in the back. So what I did was I took those initial dimensions I found for my first version, and started a new file in Fusion. I created that initial sketch, and then, and I think this is so cool, I created an offset plane 3.75 inches back. And this whole thing remains fairly parametric, so we can adjust it as we need to, or when you download this, if your machine is slightly different, by all means, tweak as needed. And if you're new to Fusion, we did that construction plane by going to Construct, Offset Plane, and punched in that distance. Then, on that new plane, I created a similar sketch, except if you compare it, the shorter sketch is my initial one, the taller sketch is the one further back. And then the magic of the loft command. I think this is so cool. We click our first profile, we click our se second profile, that shape into the shape in the back. And just like that, you have a relatively complicated shape, but incredibly easy to do so. Next up, we added some clearances for sheet metal pieces and fasteners, and then we added these tabs on to hold our magnets, and we went ahead and printed them with the threads in place to, to screw those in, and then 
Similar thing here, except I made them into teardrop shape, and this works out great, because we're gonna 3D print them with this face on the base of our printer, and having this teardrop shape means I don't need to generate any support material to hold a circular magnet in here, like so. Added some final fillets, and we're done with the auger bridge. Like I said, the thing I really liked about this design, just happened to work out that way, is we could nest four of them together on the Prusa. For the Y-axis corner piece, generally very similar concept where we've got the teardrop shape to hold the magnet that is perpendicular to the ground or up against the back wall of the machine. We've got some clearance cutaways for the sheet metal, uh, another magnet on the bottom that really helps keep it held in place. And we printed it in this orientation with that face on the bed of our printer. And to make the opposite side, we just use the mirror function to create the other side. Tear off the brim and support material. We'll then use this Noga tool. Link in the video description. We really like this ceramic style deburring tool. It's much better for things like plastic and 3D prints. The metal versions of these are great for deburring metal, but they're too sharp and they tend to gouge when you're deburring plastic. We'll chase the threads with a 440 tap. It's not always necessary when we 3D print larger threads, but it does help, especially on the smaller threads. And finally, install the four magnets and put it in the machine. Pro tip, especially if you're new to 3D printing. We printed these in this orientation. When you default to one of the more common support settings, you'll see it's gonna add support material on the three corners as well as in the two pockets. And that worked out pretty well. But we've printed so many great things for our use in our machine shop. And sometimes you just want more control over where the support material is. So hop back into your 3D editor mode and make sure you're in either advanced or expert mode and you get this paintbrush. And this paintbrush lets you paint on supports exactly where you want them. So in this case, let's say we just wanted to support the back two corners and not have any support material in the two pockets or the tip of this. By changing this to support enforcers and having painted those on, when we slice it, we now only get support material in that area. One other tip when you're 3D printing stuff, uh, we found this, this happens to be the Gorilla brand. They call it a rubberized sealant spray. It's basically spray in bed liner like Rhino liner for your truck bed. Um, we didn't end up having to use it on these, but we have used it on some 3D prints where we wanted them to either be resistant to coolant or sunlight or chips getting impregnated or even covering the magnet with those would add enough of a layer um, that's going to make it easier and give you a smooth surface to scrape it off if you want to clean it. But anyway, these have been great. I, I love keeping a clean shop, but I just don't want to have everybody spend five, 10 minutes uh, washing on a machine when it could only take 40 seconds. Um, and so they, re they really have helped a lot. And again, stopped us from having any issues throughout the day when we're running, especially this corner here. The face mill just tends to throw chips and build them right up there. So again, links in the video description to download these Fusion 360 models, as well as where we got the specific magnets for this. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Take care. See you soon.